Welcome. I'd like to explain some of the names in trigonometry. Uh, when one first learns trigonometry, one deals with a right triangle, and we may be interested in a particular angle, x. We call the side opposite that angle the opposite side. The hypotenuse, the longer side of a triangle, already has a name, the hypotenuse, but the other side adjacent to the angle we call the adjacent. And students are taught to memorize six ratios, usually three, but sometimes six. Uh, for example, we're told that sine of x is defined to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine of x, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the uh, tangent of x is called the opposite over the adjacent, and then, let's see, that's uh, three of the six possible ratios. I could do hypotenuse over opposite, and that's called the cosecant of x, very strange. I could do the hypotenuse over the adjacent, that's called the secant of x, and uh, I could also do the adjacent over the opposite. Oops, and that's called the cotangent of x. Uh, there is a wonderful history to how sine got its name. It actually is a mistranslation from uh, from Latin, which was translated from uh, Arabic, which was translated from uh, um, Sanskrit. It actually means the harbor, a place to put a boat. Very strange story there. You should see volume five of the text for that. Uh, cosine, well, that actually makes sense. Uh, the name cosine comes from, well, if this is angle X and sine is defined to be opposite over hypotenuse, the complementary angle is up here, 90 minus X, and its sine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over the hypotenuse is actually the sine of the complementary angle, hence the name cosine. In some sense, it's the companion to sine. A tangent, this is the one I want to explain. Why would opposite over adjacent be called tangent? Because in geometry, tangent means to just touch, a line that just touches something. Very strange name. And then these ones, secant, that means something in geometry too, a line that cuts through a circle. Cosecant, I'm guessing, would be a companion to that line. And cotangent, I guess, is a companion to tangent. So what I really want to explain in this video, why is secant called secant and why is tangent called tangent? And to do that, we really need to go to what trigonometry really is. It's not actually about right triangles. It's really about trying to figure out the position of a star on a circle. It comes from astronomy. So way back at the very beginning, mankind would say, OK, what is this world in which I live? And they notice that stars would always rise in the east go on great big, what well, look like circular arcs all the way around, this is a very bad circle, and 24 hours later rise in the east again. So they'd settle in the west, rise in the east. Stars would follow this motion. And the idea was, I could look up at a star at a certain angle, I'd call this angle X, and I'd be very interested in, okay, what's the height of the star? And that became known as sine of X through a tangle to tail. Again, look at chapter 5, that tail is fabulous. The this length here became known as cosine of x. Well, there is one problem with the story. We don't know what radius or circle the stars are moving along. So to make the mathematics straightforward, uh, let's work with the simplest race, radial, radius possible. Let's assume we're dealing with a radius 1. In which case, I've actually defined sine and cosine in a different way here. Sine is the height of a star on a radius 1. Cosine is the overness of the star on a radius 1. But this really is the same as opposite over adjacent, if I wish to go for uh, the old definitions. If I look at this, sine of x in a right triangle would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. I think I just said something the wrong thing just a moment ago. Well, that would be sine of x over 1, which is sine of x. Yep, opposite of hypotenuse really is sine of x. Adjacent of hypotenuse really is cosine of x. So everything's matching. All right. But then we have these other ratios. Well, I'm going to just uh, add to my picture. I have a circle, and I know I'm talking about the position of a star in the circle. And I'm going to draw a tangent line segment. There's a tangent line segment in green. And let me just continue this triangle to a bigger triangle. Let me see if I can work out the length, I'll call it h, of that tangent line. Well, I actually have similar triangles going on. Uh, I have a big green triangle, if I do the base in green as well, whose height is h. And if I divide by its base, well, it's a circle of radius 1. The base is 1. And that must be the same ratio as a smaller red triangle. It shares angle x, they're both 90 degrees by the AA principle. These triangles are similar. So it must be the ratio of the height of that little triangle, sine of x, over the base of that little triangle, cosine of x. So the height of that tangent line is sine of x over cosine of x. And hence, we will call this quantity tangent of x. If you like, sine was opposite over the hypotenuse. 
cosine was adjacent over the hypotenuse. A little bit of algebra says this is really the same indeed as the opposite over adjacent, hence the name tangent. But there's another quantity in this picture I drew. This green line here is the hypotenuse of the green triangle. It's cutting through the circle. That's usually called a secant line. Let me see if I can work out its length. Well, I'm going to do ratios of similar triangles again. The hypotenuse of the big green triangle, L, compared to the base of the big green triangle, 1, should be the same ratio as the hypotenuse of the little red triangle, which is 1, over the base of the little red triangle, cosine of x. So L turns out to be 1 over cosine of x, and we'll call this secant of x, secant of x there. Off we go. Um, what is this really? It's 1 over adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, 1 over a fraction is flip the fraction. It's really the ratio hypotenuse over adjacent. Hence, it seems appropriate to call the ratio hypotenuse over adjacent secant. It's related to the secant line in this picture. Well, then it makes sense then to say something like hypotenuse over opposite is the companion quantity to secant. Let's call that cosecant. And I guess the companion to tangent would be the other way around, opposite over adjacent. We'll call that adjacent over opposite cotangent. Okay, there's a very messy screen right now. Basically, sine x over cosine of x is the length of the tangent line segment in this picture of a height of a star. And 1 over cosine x really is the length of the secant line segment right here, hence the names secant and tangent. Now, if you look at the video on squine and cosquine, it'd be very fun to think about tank and squeakant. Go for it. Thanks very much.